Helen, I'm the Diddy Stitcher, my pronouns are she, her. Welcome if you're new, I had a little shout out from Megan Stitching Moon, which was lovely, so if you've come across from her, welcome, I hope you stay and enjoy what you see. Um, let's pull a tarot card as I do every video, so I've shuffled already and we oh it's the nine of cups so last video we pulled the eight of cups so this is really cool um i completely lost what i was gonna say there because this has thrown me so last week we pulled the eight of cups so that was kind of leaving stuff behind that no longer serves you move on um and for me that that came with a lot of organization which I will go into and getting rid of some stash that I no longer needed um so I've had a good clean up of stuff and I've managed to sell some things some stitchy things and some other um like Anna's old clothes and stuff so I had a good um a good clean up of those with the eight of cups and then nine of cups is all about celebrating that basking in what you've created from letting things go so i have a new well let me think yeah so this comes in <laughs> this comes into what i'm loving this week um or this i think it's been three weeks that i haven't filmed um let's put Let's put her up here. I still need to get a better place. We'll figure that out. Um, so what I'm loving is my organization. So the when, when I pulled the Eight of Cups, I knew I was needing to do, I was needing a clear out, um, kind of refocus my priorities in my stitching. Um, and I, I took out all of my fabric stash because it's just in a drawer and the way that it was was so messy and I couldn't find anything that I wanted and I didn't know what I had and I was buying things that I didn't need um because it was already there at the same time Rose crafts with potato on Instagram I posted this reel about a new kind of database system for tracking your whips and stuff called Notion. It's not a specifically stitchy thing, it can be anything, it can be journaling, it can be tasks lists, it can be, it. it's just a, a whole database. If you saw my whip parade, half a whip parade because I didn't have a film, the other half of it, um, I talked about my like manual notebook that I had for organizing things, writing down my whip information, start date, what fabric I was using, what threads I was using, etc. And I didn't need that anymore because I put everything on an Excel sheet. And the Excel sheet works for me. I work in Excel every day at work. Um, so I like Excel. So I'd grown out of the, the manual notebook situation I was in Excel I hadn't necessarily outgrown Excel but I kind of knew that there was going to be something that would be better that I would grow into so Rose posted this this video about how she organizes her whips on Notion and so yeah me and Natty Stitchy Natty on um Instagram were like totally amazed by this like we loved the organization um thing and it was a, a a new way of of tracking everything and it can it can link to other pages so you can have a page for your whips a page for your floss stash page for your fabric stash and you can link that fabric to a whip i want to make a video of how i use it and kind of do a screen recording of me clicking around but I haven't worked out how to do that yet but I have filmed um my new kind of fabric stash 
situation. Um, so I will put that in at some point in this video. Hi. So this is my little cupboard of stitching. I've got some project bags with some whips. That's kind of my fancy floss situation. More whips. And then I've got various drawers of stuff. So I'll just show you my fabric drawer right now. So this used to be just kind of stuffed. Everything was kind of upright like this, but in different size bags. Everything was a bit higgledy-piggledy. I had my low account stuff at the front and my high account stuff at the back, and I've swapped that. Um, but yeah, so I kind of looked online about how people store fabric. Um, and mainly it was quilting fabric. And I saw people using these um, comic cards, comic book boards. So they're, they're double the size. So this is, this is a one cut in half. Um, so people, oh, it's going in and out, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, people use these to store their quilting fabric. So I thought, why not use them to store my stitching fabric? So I took everything out of their bags. Some of them didn't have bags. Some of them was just the bags that I bought them in. Um, I took everything out. Um, I ironed everything, measured everything, and then wrapped them around this card. And then I already had these, um, this like square ziplock bag um, from some selling that I've been doing of Anna's um, old clothes. We went to like a baby, secondhand baby always makes me laugh, second hand baby, a second hand baby sale, um, so I had like sets of stuff in these bags to sell, um, which actually went down really well, so I had these spare, so instead of trying to buy new stuff, because I'd already bought the, um, the board, I thought, well, I can use these, they're not great, um, you know, they don't fit perfectly, but they fit up and down the board, and then, like, this isn't a lot of fabric for this. Um, but, for instance, this one is a lot more fabric. So it's a bit chunkier. So it gives room for... Um, to put more fabric in. And I do like them each being in their little... bags. It keeps them kind of dust-free. Um... And I can put these little these little labels in, so I know exactly what's in there. And I will show you how I kind of cross-reference it in my Notion database. Um, but I'll do a separate video on that. I might put it in here as well. So, I have the... This is just the packs system from Ikea. So I have... Some wardrobes here that's like other storage stuff for the home. But this this whole one is stitching. There is some other stitching stuff in here. But mostly it's contained in here. I'll probably take that over at some point. But so this is the, the drawer that comes with it. Um, so these are just adjustable drawer dividers. They're not Ikea, I just got them on Amazon, but so each um, compartment is a count of fabric, so that's my 36 count, so I've only got one of those, but I've got tons of 32 count. So they're all contained in there and it goes from front to back, so I've got some 56 count and some 40 count. I think that's in the same because I run out of 
Um, I run out of room. So, 32 count. Oh, what's that? That's 32 count. I got two lots of 32 count. No, that's in the wrong spot. <gasps> this is terrible. 28 count. Got a 27 count randomly. Not a lot of that. 25, 20, 18. That's mono canvas as well. So what a really big chunk of 18 count. And I had loads. And there's just like a random bit there that's not big enough to, to wrap around the, the card. So in doing this, I've taken inventory of everything that I've got. Um, and I've managed to get rid of loads of stuff as well that I know I'm not going to use because I know how much fabric I use at a time I'm tending to do smaller stuff um so although the the drawer is pretty much full I've got I've got space and I can see it now especially when it's like this I can see what kind of colors I've got um and they're all by count and I know exactly how much of it I've got. So if I've got a particular pattern, I know if I need some grey linen, that's how much I've got in there. So that's plenty. Um, so yeah, some of them are, I've already had like chunks cut out of them from previous um, patterns that I've done, I think. Let me try and find this one. So this one is the same, the same pieces of fabric, but I um, they're they're two separate pieces. One is eleven by nineteen point five inches. I do this in inches, um, and one's slightly bigger. So I think I took this one out when I, while doing this, I kitted up, um. Mirabilia Mother's Arms. So I've taken a chunk out of this one. And I think in other ones, I've had like maybe a square just out the corner. And I measure it depending on how big the square is, either by the full size um, or by the, by the most. So if there's some left over here, I'll ignore that bit. And measure like the rectangle that's full here um and then I've, I've there's always a bit extra which is fine you don't want to measure it as if, if it's as if it was the whole thing you might need the whole thing and then realize that you've got a chunk missing so I kind of underestimate how much I've got um and then I can figure out I know that there's enough of it, but I can figure out what kind of, in what kind of shape I want to cut that piece that I, that I want. I do have in the front here, some pieces. So these are bands of fabric that I got with hangers from the Harrogate Stitch Show. So I have ordered, I've got two of them. So a slightly wider one. Um, I think they're both like they kind of come out as 28 count but there's only 88 stitches across so I found some patterns that work for each and I've ordered those so I can kind of kit them up rather than just sat there and kind of me not knowing what to do with them and um, so this is like a, a Christmas piece that I'm gonna get because it's got a star and this I can't remember I think it's just like flowers or something um, so yeah, that's those two that are in the front. So once once I get those, I can kit them up. This is just my extra bags, extra um, cards that I just cut in half for each one. This is a piece of fabric. I don't know what it is. I called it natural by Zraga, but it is not. And I don't know what it is. And I really want some more. Because I love this fabric. It's it's only a, it's a 32 count. See, I called it 32 count natural. But it is not. I used it on... This was a... 
failed star on Needleworker by Little House Needleworks. And I've used it on some other pieces and I absolutely love it. And I really want some more. So I'm going to have to figure out what that actually is. But that sits there just so I have a reminder. And then extra card. I do have some more card um, in the bottom there for when I need to cut some in half. But yeah, that's my fabric. I love it. Let me show you how I file all this in my database and how it links together with all my other stash. Okay. Okay, I don't know how well this is going to work, um, but we will see. So this is Notion. Um, this is a list of all my cross-stitch projects, whips, um, finishes, and kits and patterns that are not started. But if we go here and just look at the fabric, because I don't want to take you too much through it since you can't really see it, um, I'm going to see if I can zoom in just a little bit. So you can see. So all of those fabrics that you've just seen in my drawer are listed here by count, fabric type, fabric colour, um, what brand it is, most of these I got, <laughs> what the size is, and what colour family it is. So every time I get a piece of fabric, I will put it in here, and every time I use a piece of fabric, I will either take it out if I've used it completely, or just adjust the sizing. Um, so, say I am wanting to kit up for a project or have a new start, I know that I want it on, that's not it, I know that I want to do it on 32 count fabric, I know that I want to do it on a linen, and I need it in a grey. So then I have all of these options here that are in my stash. This is the sizing. If I know how big I need the piece of fabric to be, I can exclude ones that are going to be too small. All of these ones seem to be pretty big pieces of fabric, so I think I'll be okay there. And then this is the... This is how I choose. So I can go in and pick out Dove Grey, Plain Air, I've got two pieces of Silvery Moon, Sparkle Silver, and Smoky Pearl. And I can pull all of them out of my drawer, maybe do a floss toss, without having to take out all of my 32 counts or... I, I can just find these five pieces because there's two pieces of silvery moon. The other way you could use this is say I <clears throat> say I want to buy a piece of fabric maybe off of someone's stash, a D stash. Um, and I don't know if I like, have too much of that particular fabric. Maybe I could like, maybe if I'm not really bothered about the count, just just do it by colour family. So I have, a, I know I have a lot of whites and neutrals. Um, but if it's a piece of pink fabric, I could see what pink fabric I already have. So I just have one piece, and that's a 25 count even weave. So if I if I wanted to buy more stuff, I can kind of justify it this way by saying, well, I don't have any pink in a in a linen, for example, or in a different count fabric. So I could add that to my stash and know that I'm not getting too much of too much of that. If I say white fabric. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of white fabric. 
in lots of different counts, in lots of different types. I don't need any more white fabric until I use some of this up. So I won't be buying any white fabric for a while. Um, but yeah, that is Notion. I love it. I'm absolutely obsessed with it now. Um, and I can't wait to show more of how how it works. If you're interested, let me know, um, and I can I can help with anything. Or if you just like to to watch these things, then I hope you had fun. Okay, back to the show. <laughs> Um, but check out Notion if you're interested in electronic database of your stitching or anything in your life, really. Um, I've only got my stitching on there at the minute, but I could see how I could use it in other aspects of my life. Um, so yeah, they both came together at the same time new organizational tool and de-stashing a lot of things so I have put my entire fabric stash whips whips and what floss they have and what fabric they have I haven't done my floss stash yet I've done my DMC stash but not my, like my fancy flosses um I need to get to that so I have everything there so I know if I need a particular colour and I don't have it in my stash I know it might be in a different whip without having to rummage through all my project bags and I am loving it that's why I'm celebrating what I have now because I left stuff behind because I left stuff that wasn't serving me my organisation tool wasn't serving me and excess stash wasn't serving me and um, because I've got some extra cash coming in for the stash that I didn't need, I'm able to spend it on stash that I do need. And now that I know I need, because I can just look it up in my database of what I actually need. So I have all of my patterns that are to be stitched in there. So if I want a new project, I can just go in there and choose one. They're like kind of organized by size, what I describe as small, medium, large depending on what type of project I want, whether it's a full coverage piece, a prim piece, just patterns, you know, like, I love it. I'm so thrilled with it. And it's made me stitch more. Because if you've, if you've been around a little while, I had a, a bit of a lull there with my stitching, kind of fell out of love for a bit. Not out of love because I wanted to stitch, but I just, there was like this barrier. And for me it was, I thought I had something in my teeth, but it's, it's the light is doing funny things to my teeth. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really happy that the Eight of Cups came up. I'm really happy that the Nine of Cups came up. Um, wow, that was a long introduction of stuff there. Well, it was my What I'm Loving thing what I'm loving is my organization and yeah oh, good so <laughs> let's get on to the stitching the actual stitching um so I had a finish I don't have it with me because it's already gone back to its owner I finished Roka Pier or Sunrise at Roka Pier by True Veil Stitch Kits I stitched this for a lady that had the kit but couldn't stitch on 18 count, it was too small for her. So I adopted it for a little while, I stitched it and I sent it back to her. Um, I hope she enjoys it. Um, she gets to enjoy a little piece of home because she's from the northeast of England. Um, but she doesn't live here anymore. Um, so yeah. Um, it took me about nine months, um, which I think is pretty good. I think my my other Sunny St Mary's piece by True Veil, which is exactly the same size, I think that took me about two years. It was a bit daunting having like 
not a deadline because the lady that I stitched it for didn't need it back at a certain time, it wasn't for anything, she just wanted it. But you know, when you're stitching for someone, and I think that's why I, I rarely do it, um, where I, I start out stitching it for someone, I have gifted pieces after the fact. But when you're stitching it for someone, you have that pressure on, and it, this is a hobby, it's not supposed to be pressured. Not that, not that Jill put any pressure on me. Um, like I said, did you need it by a certain time? She said, no, but you don't, you don't want to take too long to stitch it for someone. Um, so I had like let it languish in that lull that I had and she had sent it to me in the February 22. I didn't start stitching it on it until the April. I didn't get around to starting it. She had like one little start. She'd done the top row and couldn't carry on. So I, I just frogged it out because our stitches lie the opposite way. Um, so I didn't, I didn't start it until the April, but I wanted to get it back to her before February 23, that it would be a year that she would be without it, no matter how long I'd actually stitched on it. So I did about the last, the last half, I don't know, in the past three or four weeks, I just, just absolutely stitched my little heart out on it, um, which was a bit repetitive at the end because it was just like big blocks of colour. Um, I was watching lots of whip parades at the time and I just outlined bits of colour so I could just come and fill in if I had ten minutes to spare at work. Um, but does anyone else get the palpitations when you're like really close to finishing a piece? Because if, if you're new here, I rarely finish things. I've got big projects on the go and a lot of projects on the go. So a finish is a big deal. And I was like maybe a hundred stitches. <clears throat> I was maybe like a hundred stitches from finishing and my heart was just like get it done 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 and I was like I, my my hand couldn't stitch fast enough and it that last bit it made it like not unenjoyable but pressured instead of enjoying the finish my head was running so fast it had, it had already finished and my hand couldn't keep up with my brain of you know you need to finish this I don't know if it was the added pressure of it was for someone else and I wanted to get it in the post and get it get it out to her and kind of have it off my plate have the not the burden but like the responsibility of it off I just wanted it gone I loved stitching it but I wanted it gone and yeah I just wondered if anybody else had that when they're close to a finish and especially when it's like it's close to a finish but not too close like I had finished one length of thread and I knew it was gonna take another length of floss even maybe more than another length, like a length and a tiny little bit. I wasn't too sure. And I was I was clock watching at the same time because it was getting late and I was supposed to go to bed and I thought, with these palpitations, I can't go to sleep. I won't be able to sleep until this is done. So then I just have to, I have to finish it tonight. Even though I knew it was gonna be another length if not more and a length it usually takes me about 20 minutes to finish a whole length of floss um so I knew it was going to be another 20 minutes if not more so then it was like another episode of the show that I'm watching another 20 minutes then half an hour until I go to bed and all of these things are just like does anybody else get that or am I just crazy? Just asking for a friend. Um, so yeah, 
that was my finish i put pictures in at some point because like i say it's already gone in the post very very well wrapped up to its owner and i hope she enjoys it <laughs> so then i had two other whips that i've been working on since we last spoke well let me let me talk about my whip so this is where is it it's behind you just excuse me one minute this is miss mary margaret wool by the primitive hair it's part of a series of four little animals in dresses and with stitching related things crafty related things and this is where i got to you will notice that half her skirt is missing because I ran out of thread. I think this is the worst game of thread chicken that I've ever played. That's not even, that's going to be like another. Like another two, if not three yards of floss that I need. I'm very disappointed in myself. And I can't find it for love no money. Everywhere's out of stock. This is the Gentle Arts tin bucket. If you have a, a card of Gentle Arts tin bucket, even if it's partially used, I will buy it from you because all of the places that I usually buy from and the places that I don't normally buy from, it's out of stock. And I don't know what to do. I need to finish this skirt. Um, so yeah, I worked up here um, and I did the head. I'm really pleased how that came out. Um, I ran out of this white, which is classic colour wax, khaki mocha. And I had another, I had another skein of that. And when it came to the end, I was kind of here. When it came to the end of that one, I was like, I do have another one. And I couldn't find it. And then of course I ordered one and then I found the one that I had in stash. So I'm getting another skein of khaki mocha, which I probably don't need. But it's better to have better to have more than run out halfway through a skirt. I should know better. Um so yeah, this is kind of a finish for now. I've I had the there's like the little hem of her skirt in this red. And then she's got some little shoes but um but yeah if you can help me please let me know this is um a thirty six count antique it was antique white and I tea and coffee dyed it myself to give it this antique look and I'm really glad that the the scissors are, are showing in some lights where when I was working really up close you couldn't it was starting to blend in with the grey but from further away you can you can tell it's okay so yeah I don't really know what to do unless someone can help me find a skein of tin bucket. If you haven't seen already, this is Harriet Hair Cotton from the same series and I love her. So yeah, I think until I figure out 
the tin bucket situation, I'm gonna move on to linen and silk. Um, these are in, I've done a whole color conversion of different things. So I don't think I need tin bucket for those two. Maybe I've, maybe I need like a couple of stitches. And hopefully I've got enough. I am, I'm very fearful now that I don't have enough. Oh, well. We, let's just wing it. Wing it and see. So, my next whip was actually a new start. This is Cross Patch by Pixel Pixie Cross Stitch, X Stitch. Um, I am using this, I think this is the same 36 count self dyed. This is, I don't really know what I'm calling this. Denim blue? It's like a denim blue. And I've changed a couple of the colours to over dives and kept some DMC and this um, that the words will be in is a Karen Collection Wildflower in Forest Fire and I am in love with that. Look at that variegation. Beautiful. Beautiful. So this is what I used for my stitchy prompt for January. Hashtag Stitch for Pride 2023. The lovely D of D's 20 stitches has graced us again with their just unbelievable research and education skills. It, it amazes me what they do. If you don't know, Dee um, put out a whole video for a Stitch for Pride. Um, last year we did the month of June, but this year it's a whole year of prompts. So we have educational prompts, reading prompts, action prompts, and once you've done those, you get to do your stitching prompts. So this is a little um, sticker chart when you can tick off what you've done throughout the year, so I will be adding to that. But the prompt was something with an alphabet for this month, and I don't stitch many things, but it could be words as well, so I I stitched this. And I stitched this in, in anger, in dismay, in solidarity with our trans friends um, for the blocking of the gender recognition bill in Scotland by the UK government. Um, wrong on so many levels, on so many levels um, that that was blocked. So patiently waiting for February. February is on Wednesday, I think, so I will be refreshing my, um, my Excel sheet to see what what D has in store for us next month. But speaking of D, I just found out that they do a podcast about advertisements from yesteryear, our childhood, <laughs> that it is now of um, the glory days of the 90s um, and some other. I love it. I mean, I didn't grow up in America or Canada, um, so I don't know these adverts personally, but the way that Dee and Al talk about them and research them and deliver them is just, if you love podcasts, you should, you should check out, it's called Ad Creeps. You can find it anywhere you find podcasts. Um, it's just pure joy and just shows you how much Dee 
researches everything that they that they're passionate about and it just makes me want to want to research stuff and the point of of stitch for pride is to educate ourselves on on the 2s lgbtqia plus community you're doing great d we love you <laughs> thanks stitch dad um what else i just closed my notebook i also had some stitches in on my secret project but i still can't show you tbc stick around if you want to find out what that is my haul i going i'm going back to my organization tool notion which i won't stop talking about um i i figured out it would be really easy to then kit up other projects that i had that i wanted to start that were in my stash and kind of take my stash and, and put it in the right place like all together ready for when i start so when i want when i want to start something i want to start it then if i've made the decision i want it to i want to do it now so i like to have things kitted up and ready to go because of that so i've kitted up a lot of things and stuff was kind of half kitted and i just said well i've i've gained money from the stash that I've sold, I'm going to put that into the right stash that I need. Um, so I bought some silks and some beads for Nora Corbett's Moon Glow. And I bought, I, so I've already put them away. I kind of forgot to leave them. To show you guys so just believe me um and then i got some dmc etoile and satins to put in my stash for my pip and chip bobbins so i have them when i need them um i also bought from stone street stitch works they were having a little sale on their etsy and I bought this pattern, I just bought the PDF so I don't have anything but I will show you um, at the general store so you, you stitch general store and then you can stitch whatever you want underneath it they give you an alphabet to stitch whatever you want so I don't know what I will, I don't know what I will pick probably something apothecary E. my husband is a scientist he works for a pharmaceutical company can't remember what other like they give you some ideas and then a whole alphabet for you to to say whatever you want so i'll have to have a think about that but i thought it was cute um so i have that and i just bought last night and i will show you when it comes in because i'm very excited about it um i think if i've already put the fabric video in here i i talked about a piece of fabric that I didn't know what it was but I really really like it and I've been buying lots of different types of fabric trying to figure out what it is and compare it to and nothing's come up yet and then I realized that it was made up of two different threads the warp and the weft were different and I found I knew it was a zwygart because it had the orange stripe on the selvage and it wasn't dyed because the two, the warp and the weft were different colours. So I knew it was just a plain Zweigart, I could get it anywhere. So then I found it, because they were different, it's because it's one linen thread and one cotton thread. And that's called Lucan. 32 count Lucan, you can only get it in 32 count. So I was like, I think this is it, I think it, I think it really is. Um. So the only place that I could really find it for me to order was off Mrs. Sadis's site. And since it's coming all the way from Spain and, you know, I should probably get something from Mrs. Sadis since I haven't used her silks before. 
I got a whole pack of silk for Saki Girls Cabin in the Woods because I knew I had the pattern because it was in my notion and now I get to try some Mrs. Ada silk so I'm really excited for that to come I'm so I'm so I'm so happy to get some Mrs. Ada silk and I'm I really hope this is the fabric that I think because it's possibly my favorite fabric this temperature quilt is on it my autumn leaves is on it I don't remember where I got the original fabric from. I've just been using it. And then I've run out of it. <laughs> I've got this tiny little piece left that I'm comparing stuff to. Um, I really hope it's the one because yeah, it's probably my favorite fabric. And then I have to figure out how to get it in bulk. <laughs> and because it's so soft. It's because it's lit, it makes it rustic with the linen thread, but then so soft with the cotton thread. If you can get your hands on it, I would, I would really encourage you to try it anyway. So my plans for stitching, I think I'm going to jump into either linen or silk for my primitive hair ones, just so I can get a start on those until I figure out what to do about tin bucket. Um... I, oh, I did a, if you saw my Instagram, I did a reel, because I'm cool, of um, a time lapse of me stitching, and I love time lapses, and some time lapses and some calming music is just wonderful. So I got a little overhead stand for my phone, so I want to do more of those. Um... <laughs> And what else? Probably putting my, my floss stash into Notion. I'll probably do that as well. But that's about it plans wise. I'm trying not to make too many, too many plans. Just to see what the world gives me. Because if I make plans they tend to get broken. So just, just go with the flow. Um... And then life stuff, not a lot apart from we've we seem we seem to have managed to potty train Anna in the last couple of weeks. She's taken to it really well. She had no interest in it before Christmas. And then while we had a few days, I think it was like four days in the house, I was just like, I'm just gonna put her in knickers and if she wet, she wets. And if she wants to go to the toilet, she can go. I think we've had about four accidents in total. She's, she's bossed it. I don't want to jinx it. But we seem to have bossed it. She's still in pull-ups for night time, but the other... The other day she was completely dry when she woke up, so that was amazing. So I have to spend money on on nappies. Which is good, because her childcare costs have just gone up by 10% a month. Hooray! <laughs> um, that's my life. I think that's it. Nothing, nothing too much. Work is work. I'm just on a break right now. I should probably get back. Um, I'm hungry. It's not lunchtime yet. I'll get a snack. Um, but yeah. Thank you for joining me. Please subscribe if you can. And I will see you next time.